So I wanted to do a video talking about some of the smaller features that get added into both the analyzer and the dashboard software. Most of the time these features kind of got lost because you have big features uh, such as printing uh, in the last version of the analyzer or I think we had about 11 or 12 or so new dashboards in the Z1 dashboard software. But these small features do add a lot to uh, the analyzer and the dashboard, making it easier to use and making it more customizable. So that's what this video is about and we're going to go through all of those individually and uh, talk about them and hopefully you find this useful and uh, illuminating with uh, some of these new features. So let's kick this off with a new shift light pattern. This is uh, specific to iRacing and it's in the car 3 tab of the settings under the LED types. So uh, this all LR iRacing right here is the new one. This uh, will take the first shift light number and the last shift light number from iRacing and illuminate the shift lights in your car evenly between those two numbers. So it's a great way to automatically set the uh, shift lights based on the information provided by the iRacing SIM. So next up is uh, debug notifications. Uh, in both the analyzer and the dashboard, we now display if you have a debug mode on. That's uh, right here. You'll see this notification and you'll see which uh, selective mode is currently on. The reason we do this is because if you're running debug mode, it can take a lot of uh, CPU and disk writes to uh, get the data that's necessary for the debug mode and to save that into a log file. And sometimes you may have this mode on and be unaware that it actually is on, and that can cause a uh, frame rate loss in your sim. So, so by alerting you here that the debug mode is actually on, that allows you to turn it off if you uh, did not need to have it on at that time. So how do you turn off the debug mode if it was unintentionally turned off? Once you're out of the car, click on the icon to get the menu and choose settings. Then once that dialog is open, under the general tab, scroll down until you see the debug option right here. And make sure this is set to off. Uh, then click OK. And that's all you have to do. And debug mode will then be turned off. In the analyzer, debug mode is shown down here on the right. To turn that off, if you don't need it on, go to File and Settings. And then under the debug option here, Make sure this is set to off and then click OK. So next, let's talk about scrolling. Uh, it's much easier to use the mouse wheel to scroll things up and down than it is to grab a scroll bar and actually move the mouse. So now in this latest version of the dashboard, anytime you have a setting screen that has the uh, scroll bar on the right, you can also use the wheel on the mouse to scroll up and down. And likewise, if you have a drop down uh, which needs to scroll, you can scroll with the mouse as well as with uh, the scroll bar. And that's the same for any long uh, drop down menu in the, the uh, settings dialog. The uh, track list in the select lap dialog can now also be scrolled using the mouse wheel. And when you're in the import external data screen, you can also use the mouse wheel to scroll the uh, attributes that you want to assign to a uh, data point in your imported data. The analyzer will now display the minimum, the maximum, and the average values of the traces at the top right of the uh, header. You can also have it graph this out by doing control E and that then shows you an average, is the horizontal line here, and then the uh, maximum is the vertical line with the circle at the top, and the minimum is the vertical line with the circle at the bottom. If you hit uh, either the maximum or the minimum multiple times during the lap, you'll have multiple marks showing you where that happens. And uh, also note that certain traces like throttle and brake 
um, don't show minimum and maximum because you're hitting the, um, those values multiple times throughout the lab. And then uh, control E turns that off again. All right, custom traces. There are two new features uh, in the custom trace dialog. Uh, the first is pi. Uh, there's a button down here to include pi in your formulas. And pi equates to this value here. And you can also now choose a specific color for each trace within your uh, custom trace. So previously, uh, the custom traces had individual colors for each line, but every custom trace would have to have that same color. So now uh, you can choose the uh, color for each line within each custom trace. And uh, it defaults to whatever you have selected in the settings color dialog. But if you change it here, then that takes precedence over what is in the settings uh, color pages. So this is the settings color page. And if you scroll down, you get to the custom trace colors right here. So these are the defaults for each line. But if you change it in the custom trace dialog, then whatever you change it to takes precedence over this. And changing this would have no effect moving forward on the custom trace line that you selected within that dialog. Hopefully that makes sense. But uh, this does add a lot of flexibility to custom traces, especially if you use them a lot and you have multiple different graphs going on. You don't want to have them all be green or all be red. Um, you can change them to whatever you want to differentiate them when you're looking at the screen. We've added a new pause button to the track map playback features. So if you're playing back your lap and you click the pause button, the time displayed here on the left and also at the bottom is the time stamp of wherever you are on the track at that point. If you click the stop button, you then get back to whatever the full lap time is here and here. Uh, also, if you hit the stop button, it resets your play speed to one-to-one um, -one or full speed. So if I'm playing and I've slowed down my lap to half speed or quarter speed or whatever I've selected, and I hit the pause button, you get the time display, uh, in both locations, and when you click the pause button again, or the play button, it resumes at that same slowed down speed. Uh, if I hit the stop button, the next time I hit play, it resumes, but it's at full speed again. So you can uh, use these buttons to uh, change between play, pause, and stop, or if you go onto the lap, uh, dial sorry, the lap uh, menu, you can uh, choose the options here, or you can use any of these control uh, keyboard shortcuts to do play, pause, and stop. And finally, uh, different track names. If you have a track or a commercial license, now when you open a lap and those laps don't have the exact same track name, you will be presented with this dialog here asking if you want to overlay the laps anyway. Uh, this is really useful if you're importing external data and the name of the track that you want to compare it to in a sim is not exactly the same as whatever you're calling it in your external data. So uh, in this case, you see in the sim, the track is called Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, and I want to open a lap just called Laguna Seca uh, from my external data. Obviously, it's the same track, so I would click yes, I want to overlay the laps. Uh, if you click no, then it just removes the lap which you currently have loaded and opens your lap um, and replaces it that way. Okay. So hopefully this has been a useful video and you picked up some interesting ideas about features for the Z1 dashboard and the Z1 analyzer software. Uh, for more information, you can go to our website, which is www.z1dashboard.com. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.